Concept to Sales Developing Your Mindset Towards Building Online Income Written by Eric Revelto Narrated by Dan McGowan Introduction Thank you for taking the time to purchase my book, Concept to Sales. First off, I wanted to give you a little breakdown about why I wrote this book and what you can expect from reading it. First off, I have been working online for over 15 years, and I have seen the Internet develop from bulletin board systems in the 80s and early 90s to what it has grown to in the year 2015. Through that time, I have made a lot of money, and I have done a lot of things. And one of the fundamental things I have discovered is that many people don't know what to do and how to get started, or what to do after they try something and fail. This is why I wrote the Concepts to Sales book. The information in this book will take you from the original idea of wanting to make money online and having an idea to developing a product, service, and getting it out to market. In this book, we will talk about mindset, building and dealing with customers, developing a product, and making money with these ideas that you have in your head. At the end of this book, I am going to offer you access to my Concept to Sales community, where I can help you develop your ideas and take your ideas from concept to sales. I also have a writing service and product development service that I offer that will help you to take an idea for a book or other product and develop it and get it to market. Before we can do all that, you need a foundation to build from. You need to know what to expect before you jump in and fail. No one wants to spend money or their time on tasks and not achieve results. With this information, you will have a blueprint that will get you started. So, if you are ready to take your concepts and turn them into sales, jump into the first chapter, the Mindset Manual, and start developing your future. Chapter 1 the Mindset Manual What is Mindset? Simply put, Mindset is the way we deal with the problems and situations that we are forced to deal with every day. If we look at a problem and have our minds focused on solving the problem, it is commonly agreed that we have a positive mindset. If, on the other hand, you are unfocused or trying to find problems, reasons why something can't be done, allow negative people and situations to put you down or send you off in an unproductive direction, you are said to have a negative mindset. Regardless of what you do in life or what happened to you in the past, the one thing you should always remember is that every problem has a solution, and every solution can have a positive outcome if you just believe it can. Developing a Positive Mindset the number one question I get from people I deal with when they hear that I am working from home and I do it for making money on the internet is, how do I make money on the internet? Well, it is easy to make money on the internet. Just sell something. The question that you should ask is, how do I create a successful business on the internet? This is where mindset comes in. Another question I ask people who want to start making money on the Internet is, what do you want to sell on the Internet? The number one answer to that question I get is, I don't care as long as I make money. The first thing you need to understand when you start to sell something, be it on the Internet or not, is that you have to care about it. If you don't care about it and don't stand behind it, no one else will believe in it or buy it. When it comes to selling, People are buying not just your product or service, they are buying you and your word. The Simple Law of Selling Both On and Off the Internet The simple law in selling is people need to know you, like you, and trust you. Once you get people to do these three things, you will have the foundation for success. If you break even one of these simple laws, you will fail. Know you. Let people know who you are. Don't divulge personal or private information about yourself, but let people know you are a real person. 
Now, you will see the gurus or big-time internet marketers show you that they live in big fancy houses, drive fancy sports cars, go fishing on big yachts surrounded by beautiful women. Now, that is nice and all, but that is not who you are, and it is definitely not who I am or who I want to be. But that is the image they want to project, and that is fine. But you want to be you and be proud of being you. Once you lose who you are, you can never go back. Like you. Get people to like you. Make friends with people. Give them free advice and goodies. Be human, not some money-hungry organization who is only out for the money. If people like you, they will speak positively about you to their friends. And then their friends will talk positively about you, and soon you will have people beating down your door. Trust you. Trust is earned, not given away. Trust is the hardest thing anyone can give you, and the hardest thing to get back once it is lost. When someone trusts you, you have a true friend. Trust is something that can't be bought or sold. Trust is worth more than money, property, or fame. Once you have someone's trust, you have the world. On the other side of the coin, once you lose someone's trust, you lose everything. Instead of making a friend, you made many enemies. So treat trust as the lifeblood in anything and everything you do. So when it comes to what you sell or offer on the internet or in business, in general, you have to care. What is your mindset towards your ultimate goal? If your answer is to make money on the internet, then you will fail. The answer you should have given is to create a trustworthy presence where I can supply desirable information and resources to a select group of people who will like and trust me to the point where we have a one-on-one -on -one personal relationship. Through that relationship, I want them to feel comfortable enough to purchase the products and information I provide that solves their wants and desires. Now, wasn't that a mouthful? I have found that giving quick and short answers to that and in all too many questions leads to disappointment and failure. If you can put the time, thought, and effort into giving an answer, especially to questions that relate to wants and desires, you will usually better understand these wants and find a way, if not multiple ways, to fill them. Mindset Towards Customers The customers are your life's blood. If you don't have a customer, you don't have a business. The biggest mistake people do when starting a business is think that they are just selling products. This is wrong. What you are doing is getting customers. What is a customer? A customer is someone who likes and trusts you. They are someone who believes that you can solve their problems or fulfill their wants and desires. The hardest thing to do on the internet, or in any business for that matter, is to get a customer. So once you get a customer, you will want to keep that customer, and the best way to keep a customer is to keep supplying them with what they want. What do people want? This is an age-old question. What do you want? What do you want for dinner? What do you want to wear? What, what, what? Finding out what the customer wants is half the equation in developing a successful business. The second half of the equation is, how do I give them what they want? The best answer to this question is, ask them and over-deliver. The best way to ask someone what they want is to ask this simple question. What is your number one question or problem you have when it comes to X? X is the niche you are working in. So, your question should look something like this. What is the number one problem when it comes to breastfeeding? What is your main concern when it comes to teaching your child to read? What are the top five questions you need answered when it comes to X? As you can see, you can ask questions to anyone about anything. When you get your answer, then you can compile them into a product and sell it. Another idea would be for you to research the answers beforehand and develop a free report that gives them the solution. For example, write these reports that solve a problem in a niche. 
What is the number one problem in breastfeeding your child? What is the number one problem you have in getting your teen to stop smoking? What is the number one problem in keeping your dog off the couch? Allow the person to answer that question, and once they submit that problem to you, they are presented with a sales page that says, Thank you for answering our question. Our computer has analyzed your response and feels that this free report on Niche will help you solve that problem. Now, using this approach will have the visitor feel that you care and can solve their problem, as well as allows you to start building on the three laws of know, like, and trust. Mindset towards choosing our niche and developing our products. There are millions of people on the internet, and there are more people being added every day. And about 95% of the people on the internet want to, or are trying to, sell something online. With that many people trying to do what you are trying to do, in the same market you want to market in, you may feel discouraged. Don't feel discouraged. What you need to do and understand is the bottom line thinking that will get you results to your efforts. Bottom line thinking. The bottom line thinking you should have when it comes to mindset is this. Be yourself and follow the know, like, and trust law down to the letter. Not everyone will buy from you, and those who buy may ask for a refund because they want something for nothing. Build your business around 100 to 1,000 loyal customers. You don't need a million people to buy your product, just a targeted few. Mindset to Choosing Your Niche The mindset most people have in choosing a niche is to jump into the most popular or biggest niche with the most people and we will make a million dollars. Wrong. Remember, you are not looking for the million dollar payday. You want the lifetime customer. The step-by-step -step process. Step one, select a customer. Step two, learn all that is learnable. Step three, give them what they want. Select a customer. For this example, I am going to use my neighbor, Jim. Jim's problem is that his dog, Rex, is digging holes in the backyard. Now, this is a simple enough problem, right? Let's see how we can turn that problem into a profitable product or several profitable products. Learn all that is learnable. Jim's problem. Dog, Rex, digs holes in the backyard. Okay, now let's break down the players involved. Jim, ask questions. How old is Jim? Where does Jim live? Does Jim have kids? Why does Jim want Rex to stop? Rex, ask questions. How old is Rex? What type of dog is Rex? How long has Rex been digging? Let's start answering these questions. How old is Jim? Let's say Jim is between the ages of 21 to 35 years old. Where does Jim live? Jim lives in Connecticut. Does Jim have kids? Yes, Jim has two kids, a boy, Mark, age 7, and a daughter, Kelly, age 9. Why does Jim want Rex to stop digging? Rex is destroying his wife's flowers. Now, let's talk about Rex. How old is Rex? Rex is a small puppy, about eight weeks old. What type of dog is Rex? Rex is a beagle. How long has Rex been digging? Well, since we said Rex was eight weeks old, we can say only about two or three weeks. Okay, now let's look at these questions and answers. What information have you gathered? What other questions can you ask? What solutions can you offer? What other markets can you get into that may interest Jim? Give them what they want. Well, Jim is married and has two kids. His kids are young, so what products and services do young kids want? The first niche is kids' toys. Jim is married. Is Jim's marriage a happy one? How to keep passion in a marriage would be your second niche. Jim's wife has a flower garden. 
How about a product to grow better flowers? Your third niche would be on how to sell better flowers. Jim is between the age of 21 and 35. What do men in that age group have interest in? Does he like sports? What if Jim likes basketball? Well, if Jim likes basketball, how about suggesting he build a basketball court in the backyard? Well, if the ground is solid, Rex can't dig. And if Jim builds a basketball court in the backyard, you can sell him basketball stuff. Let's say Jim doesn't like basketball. Let's say he likes to barbecue. Can't Jim build a deck and his wife can plant bushes and flowers? Wouldn't gardening be another possible niche? How about grills and recipes that Jim can use to cook outside? I can go on and on, but I think you have the right idea. When gathering customers, you need to keep them and find every possible way to come back to you and spend money. Lifetime value of a customer. When you start gathering customers, you will start dealing with what we call their lifetime value. What is the lifetime value? Well, the lifetime value of a customer is the total amount of money any one single customer will pay you before they stop buying from you. Let's continue with Jim and his problem and work in lifetime value. Let's say you sell Jim a book on beagles. The book costs $29.95. Jim loves the book and wants more. So, you decide to develop an audio course on Beagles and sell it to Jim for $49.95. Then, you develop a training video for $79.95. Then, you sell him a book on how to build a deck for $39.95. From there, you sell his wife a book on growing exotic flowers in winter. You sell her the book for $47. In the back of the book that you sell her, you have ads for seeds to the flowers you talk about for another $69.95. In each of your books and products, you need to advertise or refer to other products. Now, let's break this down. Jim's book, $29.95. Jim's audio, $49.95. Training video, $79.95. Deck book, $39.95. Wife's flower book, $47. Exotic seeds, $69.95. Then, you have nothing else to sell to Jim and his wife, and they stop buying from you. This makes the lifetime value of this one customer $316.75. Now, let's say you have 10 customers who just buy the Beagle book. That is an additional $299.50. Out of those 10 customers, three buy the training video and two purchase the audio. Training video, $79.95 times 3 equals $239.85. Audio, $49.95 times 2 equals $99.90. Now, that's a payday of $639.25, plus Jim's original purchase of $316.95, which is a grand total of $956.20. Not a bad payday for answering Jim's question of how to keep Rex from digging holes in the backyard. I think Rex deserves a treat. Ruff! Mindset on developing your product. If you decide to wholesale a physical product or develop your own product, you have to keep one thing in mind. Never fall in love and marry a product, service, or idea. You have to let the market and customers decide the life of your product. If no one is buying your product or service, try giving a few away and get feedback. Don't be afraid someone will steal your product or try to copy it or give it away to millions of people. 99% of the people on the internet won't want your product in the first place. And if they are going to steal it to begin with, they would have just purchased and asked for a refund 30 seconds later anyway. Remember, you are in the business of gathering customers, not selling product. Once you get a loyal customer, they will buy more from you than the ones who give your stuff away. So, your mindset should be to give the thieves what they want and do business with your customers. Final thoughts on mindset. In this section of the book, we have talked about mindset and how you should look at situations, find problems, create solutions, and build the foundation to success. 
In the next section, we will start asking you the hard questions and getting you prepared for the business world.